Today, the focus of the talk will be on Research Network 1, or RN1, which is e-learning. In the morning session, we will have five speakers. The first speaker is Dr. Tin Sili Po from the Southeast Asian Minister of Education, or CMEO. Her talk will be in the topic of social network and e-learning ways toward lifelong learning. The second speaker is Dr. David Lancaster from the International Training Research and Education Consortium, UK, or INTREC. His topic is workplace learning and the contribution of e-learning. Then the next speaker is Professor Dr. Suneo Yamada from the Open University of Japan, or OUJ. His talk will be in the topic of nationwide and global services for sharing quality lifelong learning content in Japan. We will then have a refreshment break for half an hour. Then we will resume the next talk at 11 o'clock with the Associate Professor Dr. Achanya Ratana Ubon and her colleague from Chulalongkorn University, Thailand. The talk will be in the topic of the implementation of lifelong learning in Thailand. The final speaker in the morning session is Assistant Professor Christian Stark from the University of Duisburg, Essen, Germany. His talk will be quality development and standards in e-learning benefits and guidelines for implementation. After that, we will have about one hour lunch at the Ambrosia second floor like yesterday. For the afternoon, we will have concurrent sessions, three activities at the same time, start from 1.30. The Research Network 1 will resume here with four more speakers, which we will brief you again in the afternoon. And we also have ASEM advisory board meeting in separate room, and also some of our international guests will join um, excursion outside to Samut Prakan. So ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to start our first presentation. May I remind you that the format of the presentation will be 30 minutes of talk time plus 10 minute questions and answer. The first presenter is Dr. Tin Sili Sili Po from the Southeast Asian Minister of Education, or CMEO, and her talk is in the topic of social network and e-learning ways toward lifelong learning. Please welcome her with a big hand. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to you to the sessions on um, social network and e-learning, ways towards uh, lifelong learning. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the Thailand Cyber University for giving me the opportunity to be here to talk to you today. Um, the reason I'd like to thank them because of two reasons, because since they invited me to uh, give a talk on this topic, I have spent sleepless night uh, trying to think of how do I synthesize or share with you the information of this new trends of social network. And through that sleepless night, I ended up losing some weight, which is very accomplishing. And the second one that I'd like to thank TCU is because I have opportunity to reconnect with my old time friends through the social network without like in the past year, I've spent less time talking to them than the past few months that I've been in social network. So this is a very interesting phenomena that I would like to share with you today. So, but before I start my sharing with you, I'd like to inform you a little bit about where I'm coming from and where do I work. Uh, CMEO, some of you might be familiar with, or some of you might not. Uh, just a brief information about CMEO. We stands for the Southeast Asian Ministers of Education Organization, and our job is to promote education, collaboration in education, in culture science, and uh, in the Southeast Asia. Or in short, it's we're like CMEO in Southeast, uh, UNESCO in Southeast Asia. We have 11 member countries in Southeast Asia. We have eight affiliate members. 
uh, mostly European countries or Asia Pacific like Australia, New Zealand, France, Canada, you name it. Uh, if you want more information, you can see our website. I don't want to waste your time on that. But we also have an affiliate member, which is the International Council of Distance and Open Education and also University of Tsukuba. I noticed that some of our colleagues are also from Japan. So enough said about CIMEO, but later on it will correspond with what I'm trying to tell you about the social network and how our organization make a good use of the social network, which is the new trends today. So speaking to expert, because I see in the agenda you are e-learning expert and you are all expert in your own field. Uh, talking to expert is quite difficult. So I try to pursue it in a way by telling stories to you. I'd like to share my view as a user. I'm not a computer expert. I'm just a user of social network. And this is how I use this social network to benefit my professional development. So let's start by reflecting. If you, we've been talking about e-learning for many years. We talk about e-learning a lot yesterday. Now let's pause for one minute here and think of what do you think of as e-learning? I'd I like you to take one minute pause and write or think in your mind what do you think of e-learning and if some of you can share with us uh, in that sense it will be good. Anybody would like to volunteer? What do you think of e-learning? Did I hear somebody in the back or no? You know, interesting, I was in Bangladesh uh, several months ago and I've been through many presentations and most of the time at the end of the presentation not many people ask questions or interact with the, the presenters. But in Bangladesh, it's a very interesting. Uh, we have the audience like this, but at the end, you'll see like 30 hands raising to ask questions. And they all ask um, very interesting questions, not try to provoke or anything. Okay, so for the e-learning, since none of you share, anybody like to share what e-learning is? Yes, thank you. What do you think of e-learning? Yes, perfect. Did you, did you see my next slide? I think you, got, you saw my next slide because that was exactly the answer. Yes, and you'll get the award from Dr. Shawalert later on. Thank you so much. Yes, because for e-learning, it's all types of technologies, uh, because we've been talking about e-learning, but what specifically is it all about? So it's all type of technology-enhanced learning, where technology is used to support learning process, so exactly what uh, our colleague has shared with us. Now let's reflect another question. What is online social network? Okay, let's pause here about 30 seconds and think of the online social network. Okay. okay, great. All right, so that was the th one minute over. <laughs> what is the, what do you think is this online social network? More hands again? More present from TCU later on? Yes, lady at the back, please. Yes.
great. Thank yeah. you. Uh, so the, I, for me, one of the key things that make the social networking success is how to bring people back to the network and create more things involved and they will put themselves at the, the best participants and they have created one thing together. That is a part of the social networking from what my understanding. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for sharing. And your understanding of social network is true because social network is a new platform of socialization through online or through internet, basically. It's a new global communication tool and it's virtual community online. And it is a place where people meet online. Most of the time you use device like iPhone or you use device like the internet or you use the BlackBerry, the new computer. Um, speaking of BlackBerry, how many of you have used BlackBerry? The new, uh, the new mobiles become very popular. Yes, you have one, right? The interesting story that I'd like to share with you about the BlackBerry is that a friend of mine in Indonesia also have a similar phone, but on the top that said BlackBerry, it changed into Blueberry. And it's functioned the same, but it's imitate one. So I figure next time I'll do the Raspberry one with the pink layout. So this is one of the tool device for online social network. Last night I also watched CNN. And on CNN when the anchorman or anchor lady try to share or ask people to interact with them by sending message back. In the past, they would just say, send in your I report. Now they would say, if you like to interact with us, send us through information through Facebook or Twitter, if you notice that. So this is a new way of interacting with uh, people on social network on the online. But what is it all about? This is the media of social media. Many of you have been familiar with, many of these are overwhelming, we never heard before, or many of you use it on a regular basis. Uh, among the many of those, YouTube is one of the famous ones. Uh, Flickr, it's a platform where you sh uh, use this software or the media to share information like graphics. You use Flickr to share graphics or you have the platform of voice where you can share your voice. There's a software called VoiceThread, which I will show it to you later on. And we also have the platform of sharing a conversation like Facebook, or now they have LinkedIn. It's more like very much professional. So whatever this is, it's up to you to choose uh, the media that you like to use. But for some of you that have not yet use these social media, uh, don't worry because you're still be able to catch the boat or the trip because notice if you can see from the statistic, only 23% of the people, if you see the uh, yellow color, only 23% on this part, they only use it only a few months or a few years, less than that. Uh, the new one, or the majority, has been going for like recently, the green one, and then the blue one is they just get start. So which means this is a very new phenomenon. To confirm this is that I read in the Time Magazine the recent issue in June this year, and in the Time Magazine at the cover page, it has the information on Twitter on it because the guys who write this article, he wrote through Twitter, and, and I'll show you later on how Twitter works. In, among the social network software or social uh, media like MySpace, Google, or Facebook, or Twitter, all of these, the statistic that Time Magazine have find out is that last year, among the visitors, this is a num these numbers are in millions, uh, MySpace, it's 58.75, uh, whereas Google, it's very popular, it was like 120 some million people. Uh, Facebook, it was about 23 uh, million, whereas Twitter last year was just 1.22 million. Now, recently in April, look at the increase in number. 
MySpace dropped. Whereas Google, a little bit increased. Facebook, of course, increased a lot. But Twitter, notice that it increased up to 17 million, and this is the percentage of change. It become a very increasingly um, amazing phenomenon in global trend these days that people Twitter or tweet when they try to send a message, they call tweet, send a short message. You notice the percentage of how much, uh, how many people use that. Now, how does it work, all of these social media? Let me start by sharing my experience of first uh, social uh, network through Facebook. How many of you have the account on Facebook? Can you raise your hand? Great. All right. And how many of you have account on Twitter? Okay. Great, great. All right. Then we can be each other followers later on. Okay. So among many of these, I'm just going to pick, because of the time, I'm just going to pick two examples for you to see how this new social network work and how it benefit the e-learning. So this is the first page of Facebook. The idea is that you sign in through that and then you put your password in. When you get in, you, give, you have your own account and this is my, fa my, my profile. So I have my picture there and I notice that I also have friends on this side, my friends who also, I have to invite them to join me. And how, it work, how does it work? So I start by writing here in this small column. It starts with the concept of what's in your mind. Let's say if I'm giving a presentation, I'm just gonna type giving a presentation to a wonderful audience at ASM conference. I'm just gonna type like that. And it will show up on the next line right there. And if my friends, who also have an account on Facebook, would like to comment, they would just click at, there's a word that comment, and they can just write comment. I like it, or I don't like it, what are you doing, or whatever the conversation they would like to do. They can also, I can also find my friends, if I like to know who also have an account on Facebook, I can also type the email address to find my friend and invite them to join me. In, within the same conversation group. It's very limited if you accept only the invitee. If you don't accept the per person, nobody can see your, web, uh, your Facebook profile or nobody can uh, talk to you. So this is how I find my friends on the Facebook. And this is my social network recently that I've mentioned to you. I have friends all over the world that I've been connecting with them. In the past, I, because of uh, distance, I wasn't able to talk to them because uh, they moved away. I used to work in UNESCO ICT in education unit, and many of them are foreigners, and they moved in many countries. For example, I have friends now who I haven't seen for years in Mongolia, as you can see up there. He's riding a horse in Mongolia, have an eagle in his arms. And my other friend who's now moved to Afghanistan in Kabul, another friend in Germany, in Netherlands, in UK, New Zealand, Australia, Indonesia, or Thailand, you name it, all over the world that I can connect through my social network to my Facebook page. We've been talking to each other every day through that type of conversation. That's one way of, of uh, how I can get the social network. Now, the second one of social network is Twitter. This is very new in Asia, but um, in United States or in Europe, it's, it's a phenomenon. Or maybe in Asia, like recently, uh, the Iranian election or the protest, one of the things that has raised the great phenomenon of social media because people send messages by Twitter and the government cannot block it or even the earthquake in China, uh, it's the first time that even the government themselves doesn't know what happened or what's going on, but people report it to three Twitter because they write, there's a shake here and there, and that's how they will gather the information about this uh, phenomenon. So this is how it worked, Twitter. This is the first page of Twitter. And um, also, when you have to sign in and log in as an account, same concept as Facebook. There's a block, there's a space where you can type, but 
in Twitter different from Facebook is that you have to limit your conversation to only 140 characters only. You cannot type more than that. So you have to think before you type it in not to exceed that. And notice that there's a number up there, 140. It tells you if you exceed the character, it will not take your sentences. So that's how you would like to do it. So start with the concept, what are you doing? And then you type in there. And whatever you type, it will show up there. So uh, that's what I typed last night when I'm working on this presentation. I said, sharing my views as a user of social network for lifelong learning. I am now become a Twitizen because I'm a citizen of Twitter. That's a new one. So I tweet to my friends, say that now I'm, I'm sharing with you about this. So the concept of Twitter different from Facebook is that we have the concept of following and follower. Following, I, if I'm interested in my colleagues, what they're doing, they know they have an account, I will follow them by click at their email and then I follow whatever they type, I will see it on my page. For at the same time, I will also have a follower. If I type something that interesting, people will search for the conversation or my colleagues will follow me so they know what's going on, what I type on that box there. How does it work? Sometimes we share the forum by doing a search. For example, I, when I do my research for this social network, I type in social network with e-learning. Whoever typed that word on Twitter, it's do the search real time. It shows me globally who has the conversation about social network. So it shows me on my page. So this is a very a quick way of uh, finding information through the social network of Twitter. And this is the page of uh, people who I'm, whom I follow. The first one, if you, if you see it clearly, it's the former governor of Bangkok, Mr. Apirak, Apirak. and then I also follow, follow Ajahn Thuwisak. Uh, and then CNN, and the, the, the last one is Obama, President Obama. He is the most uh, page on Twitter where people follow. This is his page. Uh, he has about almost two million people follow him. As you can see, there, there's a number here. Follower, and he's following about 70,000 or so, which means whatever he does, giving a speech, he will just type, like recently he said, speak on healthcare reform. He tweet on the Twitter, and it will show his follower will see what's going on. He'd like to share his view with his colleague or people who's been his admirer that way. So this is one example of uh, how do we socialize now. And I also have followers, my friends, whom I see, whom they think that I write something makes sense and they will just follow me. And this is another example of how people use this social media. Uh, this is one of the person who been an instrumental who promote Twitter. Uh, his name is Ashton Kutcher. He, he, if you don't know him very much, if you know, he's a, a partner of Demi Moore. And he tried to pursue his follower to, uh, for a cause, for charity cause. He tried to do charity work by getting his follower to donate some money to help the poor, to help the hunger in the U.S. So using the celebrity issue by the power of social media. And this is a page that's very interesting. This woman, she's 140 years old. Her name is Ivy Bean. And she's been Twittering all day, and people have been following her. And if you like to follow her, uh, you can type her ID number. is Ivy Bean 104. That's her age. You'll be surprised. Why is it so interesting? She would just wake up and say, I just have my cereal breakfast. And now I'm ready to go for, to have my high tea. But you'll be surprised how you get so engaged in people's life and you would like to know and talk to them on social network. Try it and you'll see that it's very interesting phenomenon and you learn by engaging. And this is a page by, of Oprah Winfrey. Uh, people follow her a lot as well. I think it's second to Obama. Uh, she always said whatever she thinks, very provoking lady, a very interesting show. Or even Lance Armstrong, uh, our uh, Tulte Franks, that he also announced that he has a new baby, 
from Twitter. That's the first thing people in the world knows. And then the other day, the media said, do I need to know whether you have a baby or something like that? So it was, it was like over coverage. Or even if you're a fan of basketball, Shaquille O'Neal, he also have his face, uh, his, his Twitter on his profile. Or Larry King Live, if you want to follow Larry King on what's going on on, on his page, you can search for King Things and then he will uh, tell you what's going on on his new program or what interesting uh, program that he will share with you. Now, after seeing those, do you think these activities are nonsense, educational or entertaining? Now think of it. Right? Because it can be nonsense, it can be used at, as educational, but I think above all, the quality of use of this social network depends a lot on how you use it. Okay, and let me share with you how do we can make use of these social network. Remember my social network that I show to you here from my friends all over the world? This is how I learn and how I benefit and I become a, a true e-learner. My friend in New Zealand sent me a link of UNICEF, which give information about how we can help the children by using the blanket, donation of blanket to help children. So this information has been located in New Zealand somewhere, which I would never know. But my friend who's conversed with me through the Facebook share with me this link of UNICEF. We were able to talk to share the common interest on this information. And this is another example. My other friend who's also working on the education for all, his name is Ko Chi Tung, he's working in Sweden. He's a true promoter of education for all for UNESCO. So this is a UN, uh, the UN Millennium Development Goal, which Richard Gere did a video clip to promote the UN decade, the uh, MDG. So he shared this common interest with me and I were able to see how celebrity can promote uh, the UN development goal to help poverty in less developed countries. This is another way of sharing information. And this is another friend of mine in the Philippines. This is a good example of how you can uh, connect people through the network. This friend of mine, she's a Filipino, used to work in Thailand but now moved back to uh, Philippines. She has, a, she's a very active members of the Philippine and Thai Association. So she would like to get together people who've been uh, associated with the association. So she posted out on the webpage that said, oh, there's a cooking class from this Thai lady that we would like to share through the association activity. This is another way of promoting it. And this is how my friend in Netherlands uh, share with me the information. She shared with me the picture that in the office that she took they have a meeting on Web 2.0 because she worked for UNESCO Water Institute in Netherlands and they use social media to try to get people to promote their e-learning program of a water sanitation through graduate program. So the group get together, have a meeting. So she took pictures, she posted on the Twitter and, and Facebook and share with me later on her PowerPoint through SlideShare. She posted up her PowerPoint, which was discussed in her meeting that she showed in the picture. And there's also the website. This is a new, also the new concept of social network is that you sh post in your slides that you teach in your class uh, with other. It started out in 2005 with uh, Wiley that it's a concept of post one slide, then you use one slide. Uh, I'm sure you, some of you are familiar with the OER, Open Education Resources, which we base on three concepts, reuse of resource, remix the resource, reconstruct the resource, and redistribute the resources, uh, which means you see, use the PowerPoint and redistribute, remix, or mix and match, whatever you use, but reference it. This is a slide share, which many of the professor all over the world use use this service. I'm not going to go into more detail about OER or open education resource because I know later on there will be uh, one of our speakers will also talk about that. But this is a platform where I can get my friend's PowerPoint and then look at it and share with that. It's very interesting, easy and simple to download. 
And this is also how I use the social network through my work at CMEO. CMEO, we have 15 centers. Well, by now, it's almost 20 centers throughout the Southeast Asia. And each center, we have our own specialized area. For higher education, we have CMEO right here. And Professor Dr. Supachai Yuoprapat is also with us here today. He's the director of CMEO right here, one of the center of CMEO. And through CMEO units, we try to collaborate on activities that we can work together. So I create a page on Facebook called CMEO Collaboration. And this is how it looks. It is a Facebook that I show you that I, I used to talk with my friend, but I'm trying to make it more professional. So this is my colleagues at work, as you can see the picture. And I initiate the conversation. Among CMEO unit, we have a theme of we try to promote publication together as one CMEO. So we try to talk to each other through Facebook of how we can make this publication to be as one. So I initiate the conversation, I share with them the video clip, and then my friend who is in Malaysia, in one of the, our center, respond to me, okay, it's a good idea, good video. So we've been talking about it and share idea of how we can collaborate and produce our publication together among uh, our organization. So this is how we can make use of it professionally. Or I can look at the Education Times on Twitter to see what's going on in education trends. It's a place where you can reflect through this social network. Or this is also another concept of, you heard about seminar, right? But now you have a seminar through the internet called webinar. Uh, the webinar, Dr. Thanom Pan also introduced me several months ago. It's a good way of professional development. Now I'm an addict to the webinar because oftentimes when we work during the daytime, we don't have time to attend the seminar, but I can attend it online. I can choose the course that I would like to uh, improve my area of interest, then I attend the course for free. So you can check it out, it's worldwide. Uh, you can just Google it by webinar and you'll see all those courses. And you can, sometimes you can see live video or sometimes you can s download the PowerPoint presentation. Or also, sometimes I use, I do teacher training too. And the way I can get examples of lesson plan for teachers, I go through this social learning network. They have a collection of online courses or they have a collection of lessons plan. So I go this to web, this website as well. Or this is also another example of the professor uh, in one of the university who used YouTube to videotape herself and give a lecture <coughs> online. Also, uh, a friend of mine in the University of California, Irvine, he, he also mentioned to me that a lot of the uh, university in the States, now when the professor come to the classroom, there's an automatic machine. You just, the professor just need to hit the button and the video camera will automatically videotape his lecture. He doesn't have to do anything, just give a lecture like normal classroom. The videotape will automatically tape his lecture and then when he finish his lecture, he will just press the button. That video will automatically upload his video through YouTube and it can be live. Now, you probably think, why do I need to give a lecture to my students on YouTube, whereas I can give a face-to-face? -face? Will that be a more efficient way of giving lecture? But this is how my friend at Irv University of California, Irvine said. Uh, he said that students now, it's become a new phenomena. When they not understand, they go, the teacher will refer to as, if you're not clear of any of my point, go back to see my video and there's a time. Ask, tell me what is the time of my lecture that you do not understand. Then he go back to see that time and explain to the person about that. Or sometimes if the student missed the class, of course, they can always use the YouTube uh, video. And another way is that now another new phenomenon among the Asian students in, the, in many of the universities in LA is that at the university's library, they have to restructure the whole uh, platform of, uh, of library. There's no longer bookshelves anymore. They open the floor and put big tables in it with notebook in the middle, whereas notebook is wireless. Why? Because they said this is a place where Asian students like to get together and discuss on 
professor lecture, oftentimes they have cases which 